Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome, my dear families, brothers and sisters, religious sisters, fathers, and friends all over. We are now, today, beginning the second week after Easter. The excitement of Easter is a little less this week than last week, both in our own hearts and also in the readings and the liturgical uh, prayers, etc. We begin in a way a little more normal times. The whole of last week was uh, just the Easter celebrations. The coronavirus infection is still spreading. It's still a threat to us in India and all over the world. During this Mass, I want to pray especially for our friends abroad. I want to think of New York, which is suffering so much at the moment. Got so many friends over there, my friends in Washington. We pray that the Lord has mercy on them. Help the sick, help the doctors, give courage to all. Keep, do keep this intention in your prayers. And let's begin the sacrifice now, asking God's forgiveness for our sins. Making us more worthy to receive him. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You come to make all things new. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. May you forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have been renewed by Paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our heavenly Maker. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Can we sit? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As soon as Peter and John were released, they went to the community and told them everything the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard it, they lifted up their voice to God all together. Master, they prayed, it is you who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. You it is who said through the Holy Spirit and speaking through our ancestor David, your servant, why this arrogance among the nations, these futile plots among the peoples, kings of earth setting out to war, princes making an alliance against the Lord and against his anointed. This is what has come true. In this very city, Herod and Pontius Pilate made an alliance with the pagan nations and the peoples of Israel against your holy, holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, but only to bring about the very thing that you in your strength and your wisdom had predetermined should happen. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and help your servants to proclaim your message with all boldness by stretching out your hand to heal and to work miracles and marvels through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the house where they were assembled rocked. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to proclaim the word of God boldly. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, blessed are they who put their trust in God. Together, blessed are they who put their trust in God. Why this tumult among nations? 
among peoples this useless murmuring. They arise, the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. Our response, blessed are they who put their trust in God. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Our response, blessed are they who put their trust in God. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron, you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Our response, blessed are they who put their trust in God. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, as I was saying at the introduction, that we are coming back a little bit, finishing a concentration on the resurrection event, and coming now to the passage in the gospel. But there is certainly a connection. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. Now, you remember Nicodemus? He appeared, his name appeared in the scriptures after our Lord was crucified. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came together and took the body of Jesus to be put into the tomb, into the sepulchre. 
Nicodemus brought about a hundred pounds of spices. Very generous. Also shows how much he loved Jesus. Also, he must have been a very wealthy man because it would have cost a lot of money. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, the scriptures say. We know from later also that he was a member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the Supreme Court. There were about 70 members, influential families who uh, decided everything in the Jewish community. So he was a very educated man, very respected man, very successful man. And his coming to Jesus indicates also a sincere man. The Pharisees in general and Jesus were, and Jesus were on a collision course because uh, the Pharisees I mentioned before were people who are just sticking to the letter of the law, never wanted to go to the spirit. And Jesus consistently insisted that we must go to the meaning of a law, spirit of the law, just not fulfill the externals, fulfill the interior. Love of God, everything based on that, and love of neighbor, everything based on that. This, these are the two principles. And uh, they would forget this and go to the externals also. Yet in spite of all that, Nicodemus now begins to be converted to become a disciple of Jesus. And he comes to Jesus and says, no one else, no one could do all what you're doing unless God was with him. And that's interesting. So he begins to see God's hand in what Jesus did, the miracles, and the teachings were consistent also, which Jesus gave. Today's, uh, in today's gospel passage, Jesus tells him that he has got to be born again. Everybody's got to be born again. What does being born anew, born again mean? One has got to be, make, one cannot, as Nicodemus was confused, he says, uh, can I go into my mother's womb a second time? How can I be born again? Jesus certainly again was going to the spirit of the law, the spirit of his message. We've just celebrated Easter. And if you remember on Easter Sunday at the vigil, and again on Easter Sunday morning, we renewed our baptismal promises. All of us were baptized. And I think most of us would have been baptized as infants. And we don't therefore have any uh, remembrance of our baptism, when our godparents and our parents renounced Satan, accepted Jesus in our name, and then we were baptized. That's why the church wants us every year, every so often, to once again be born in Jesus. Every baptism is like being born again. We're born physically, but we're born spiritually. And every Easter celebration, every renewal of baptismal promises is once again accepting Jesus. It means renouncing Satan and accepting the teachings of Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit, and the church which he founded. Sisters and brothers, we, you and I, as we begin this second week, and now getting into normal times, as it were, liturgically, have got to be like Nicodemus. If you've got time now, and go to Jesus and say, in our time when we're free, Lord Jesus, very clear, we know now so much, you are the Lord, you are the master, you are our creator, you are God. Make an act of faith. Each one of us must do that personally. We have the time. But ask Jesus, what must I be do? What must happen to me for me to be born anew? Which he tells Nicodemus to do. What is, what is in my life? What does it mean to really once again renew my baptismal promises? Maybe this week we can reflect on that and how we can renew our baptismal promises. Renouncing evil, looking at our lives to see how we can be better disciples. What do I have to renounce in my life to be a new man, a new woman, a new child, a new boy, a girl? How, what must I do? And again, 
acceptance. Acceptance of the Christian faith of Jesus is accepting a person, the person of Jesus, and all that he taught. That our Father is in heaven, loves us, that Jesus was his son, he came over here, he suffered and died for us, and he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, which formed this community. Let us join Nicodemus at the feet of Jesus, asking Jesus to enlighten our minds, to move our wills, to be more and more his disciples. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring we bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. The story right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you, yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land Every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sings together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced with eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray with confidence now to our Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. This offer is the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
we now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass Senate, go in the peace of the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. God bless you. Have a nice day. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>